Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Fox and today I wanted to introduce you all to my brand new Destiny 2 Beyond Light series. This particular video will be more of a basic entry level guide covering four specific subjects. So that will be your character and subclasses, your weapons, armour and just loot in general, your power level and how you can increase this and finally your quest log and the, the main campaign for Beyond Light. So what I'm trying to do here is essentially allow new players to the series and returning players to come back to Beyond Light and have all of the information they need to get to uh, a reasonable power level so that they can start tackling endgame content. The future of the series will essentially be more advanced guides on uh, mods, builds, raiding, PvP or specifically competitive PvP and just the rest of the endgame content in general. So solo activities, uh, master and grandmaster activities as well. These are quite difficult to hit for the most part and without the appropriate builds and knowledge they can be, you know, can really lower your chances of success. So we'll essentially be working towards that over the course of a few videos in this series. Um, I do usually cover the Division 2 on this channel, I will still be doing so, but I am going to be looking at Destiny 2 as well, so for those of you that are interested in one or both of those games, um, please do like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification icon so that you are notified of any future videos. So let's start the first section then, your character and subclasses. Now new players to the game will be presented with a screen similar to this, uh, you have three character slots, you can see I already have mine all filled in with a Titan, Hunter and Warlock. These are the only three characters that you can select in game and it is highly advised that you have one of each. Having two Titans for example doesn't offer very many benefits as the game won't reward you powerful gear or raid gear on the second Titan if you've already done it on the first one. For the most part though I appreciate that new and returning players might only have one character. Which one you choose is entirely your decision. Um, Bungie, the developer of Destiny 2, frequently changed the sandbox uh, and as a result there is never really one character that is on top all of the time. It does tend to fluctuate. Um, not only that, all of these characters can perform quite easily in any content, be it PvP, endgame, solo, generic PvE. So don't feel that you need to go for a Warlock because everyone says they're better this season or a Hunter or whatever else because that is absolutely not true. You can literally play what you want. For those of you that are unaware, the Titans are essentially your tankier players of the game. Their armor usually has quite high resilience, giving them a larger health pool, and they have a barricade that allows them to protect their teammates um, as their class ability. Hunters are more of the rogue type characters, they can dodge roll, they have quite high agility so they can jump and move around faster, use throw knives, turn invisible, that sort of thing. So I typically use my hunter for PvP as high mobility is always good in that, that environment. And warlocks are more your mage type character that um, boss can still use exactly the same weapons as all of the other classes, tend to be quite weighted towards their abilities. So their super, their melee and their grenade are all quite potent. So choose whichever one you like the sound of and if you have the time just do what I've done and you can set up all three and have a play around with them. For the purpose of this video and guide we're going to load into my Titan just because this is the one that I mostly use for PvE and I'll quickly explain how your subclasses work as well. So each character has three subclasses to start with and when you complete the Beyond Light campaign you'll actually have a fourth subclass which is the new Darkness Stasis subclass. But again just for the purpose of this guide we're just going to have a quick look at the original three um, Solar, Void and Arc you'll see these three icons on all three of your characters but the classes do pay quite differently and there is a lot of customization options options within them it's very easy to change uh, and select the class that you want and if you actually go into uh, the class itself you can then customize the different nodes and choose the version of this class that you prefer on the left hand side these are typically fixed so you always have your three grenades here and you can change these at will it tells you which button it binds to which of course will vary based on the platform that you're playing on um, you know, I'm not going to sort of go through which grenades are best which class abilities are best and which jumps are best because honestly I feel as a new or returning player it's highly advisable that you actually just try all of these different subclasses including you know the different uh, elements just over here uh, just to get a feel for what you want because uh, as I was saying with the character selection screen you can really get away with running any subclass even up to end game content yes in unique instances you may be asked to run on um, I don't know Water Dawn as a Titan or Well of Radiance as a Warlock but for the most part you can just play any class that you want and find the ones that you are most comfortable with so when you come to the screen you're able to choose the grenade that you want you get an in-depth description as to what the grenades do and the button that it binds to your class ability, which is different per character, um, is always on the left hand side. So as I was saying before, Titans do have a barricade and you have a choice as to which one you use. They do offer different benefits. And then finally, you can choose the jump that you want as well. Experiment with these, um, although the 
kind of going against my words here the one suggestion i probably would make is just to go with strafe lift um there is a strafe jump across all three characters i think the general consensus among the destiny community is that this is the best jump because it gives you a lot of control in air um, which is fantastic for pretty much all content but high jump and catapult lifter are very popular as well so just play around with them all see which one you feel most comfortable with and go from there um, now, I believe new players no longer need to level these up, um, whereas in historically you would actually have to earn XP to unlock all these individual nodes. If that is still the case, then it is very easy to do, so it doesn't take much XP at all. Um, but just bear in mind, you may need to unlock these nodes one by one if you are a brand new player to the game. Um, I'm fortunate I'm not in a position where I'm prepared to delete one of my characters to test that out, so I can't confirm nor deny that. When you select one of these nodes, it highlights all four options within, and you can no longer use any of these ones down here. What these uh, options on the right essentially do is change not only how the super works, but usually how your melee works, as well as introducing some additional uh, passive abilities. So they do tend to change the class um, quite extensively. For example, the middle tree here, Code of the Missile, completely changes your super from what it states here, which is to slam into the ground and then essentially run around meleeing everything. This one, you just fly through the air, like quite literally like a meteor or a missile. Um, so again, same thing as before, just have a read through these and see which one you prefer. And, but by all means, test them all out because they all three of these nodes, even though they're within the, the Striker Arc subclass, can actually play quite differently. And this is also true for, of course, the solar version, which has a brand new set of grenades, um, you know, three separate classes here. So quite a lot of flexibility to choose from and you can really make your build how you want to make it. When you complete the Beyond Light campaign, you will then have this additional node just here. Now that campaign will take you through how to use it. There are a few sections where it actually forces you to use it, but gives you um, extreme sort of ability regeneration. So you can just keep spamming your supers and your grenades and your melee just to get familiar with it. The way this class works is a little bit different as you have a bit more flexibility. You still have the same class abilities. This will be true for the Warlock that uses a Rift and the Hunter that uses a Dodge Roll. You'll notice these are still the same two. That also applies to the Jump, so none of that, the movement part or the class abilities changed. But what it will do is give you a Stasis uh, Melee and the choice of three Stasis Grenades. And instead of having the three separate classes to choose from on the right hand side, you can now customise individually your Aspects and Fragments. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these today because this is a little bit more advanced and you will unlock all of these as part of the natural progression of the campaign and the side quests that come with it. But what you can essentially do is read each of these and see which ones you prefer. Um, depending on whether you're playing PvP, solo, PvE, you may want to change these around, but it takes all of two seconds to do so. Very, very simple. So, uh, yeah, have a little play around with all of these classes and see which one you like. So that brings us on quite nicely to the second part of the guide, which will be loot, um, specifically weapons and armor. Now, loot is obtained from almost any source in the game. And when I say loot, I'm specifically referring to engrams that drop on the floor from enemies, from chests, from completing activities, um, literally everywhere. Engrams are essentially um, an item that decrypts into weapons and armor. The majority of the weapons and armor are in the world loot pool, which means they can just drop from pretty much anywhere. But there will be certain weapons, particularly exotics um, and certain armor pieces that are limited to specific activities. For example, there is a crucible set of armor um, that doesn't necessarily offer you any huge benefits over other types of armor. But there will also be certain weapons that can only drop from strikes, crucible and so on. What you really want to do is farm these activities as much as possible and just by naturally playing through the campaign if you're just coming back to the game you'll get a lot of different weapons not only rewarded to you but dropping from enemies as well so there's no real um, loot farm that i'm going to go through today it, i would just recommend as a new or returning player that you just play through the campaign and all the missions that you're presented with and you will end up with tons of weapons and um, gear to choose from now you have three weapon slots, your kinetic, which is not elemental at all, but does 10% more damage to enemies without shields. You have your energy shot, uh, energy slot even, um, which is elemental. So you notice that these numbers are either blue for arc, uh, solar here, and I don't have a void in anything here, but um, yeah, these are essentially elemental weapons. So these do a bit less damage to non-shielded enemies, but they are very potent at bringing down enemy shields, particularly if you actually match the flavor of your weapon to their shield. So if you come up against a fallen captain that has an arc shield and you happen to be using this exact shotgun, which is also arc, it not only breaks the shield, usually very quickly, as they do several hundred percent more damage to shields, um, but it creates a very large explosion as well. 
you can break enemy shields with a non-matching elemental weapon as you still do quite a fair bit more damage to enemy shields so you don't have to match up all the time um, but just bear that in mind energy weapons do more damage to shields kinetic weapons in the top slot do more damage to um, just health bars in general this doesn't apply in pvp by the way they're exactly the same and then finally we come to the bottom slot here which is your power slot and these are also always elemental so you notice here these have void solar arc um, but these are just your hardest hitting enemies the general rule of thumb with your weapons you can have one primary ammo weapon as you can see here that the little if you look at the floating box in front of you next to the 1244 level you notice it says primary with that single bullet symbol you can have special ammo weapons the double green and you can have heavy ammo weapons your power weapons which is the the triple purple now you can technically have two primary or if you really wanted to you could even go for two special but it is usually advisable apart from in quite niche situations to have one primary one energy excuse me one special and one heavy so essentially just look for one white one green and one purple now yes for you know certain content it, there might be situations where you want to change this but for the most part and that, as this is a basic guide designed at new and returning players a general rule of thumb is that your primary ammo weapons have by far the most abundant source of ammo but they typically do the least amount of damage so these are your bread and butter weapons and whether you have it in your kinetic or your energy slot is entirely your decision it really doesn't make a difference at this stage in the game um, so these are your bread and butter weapons the primary you'll be killing most of the enemies in the game with these probably about 80 percent of all of your kills will be on your primary weapon it's a fine one that you are comfortable with your special ammo weapons are much um, the ammo is much less abundant but they hit harder quite a fair bit harder in fact so you'll typically use these for your harder to kill more powerful combatants and then finally we come to the most rare type of ammo your heavy ammo for your power weapons these do in most instances the largest amount of damage and therefore should be reserved for bosses now as i said this can change depending on endgame content um, for example the cloud strike sniper is technically one of the highest dps in weapons in the game at the moment and it's only a special but you know you won't be getting this as soon as you start the game you've got to do some um, different content to get that so just follow that general rule of thumb um, one primary one special uh, one heavy ammo weapon and then you can either have your primary or your special in this slot and then the opposite one in this slot if you want to see what you can choose from, you can simply left bumper twice over to the collections tab, go into weapons, and it will give you a category of all the different types of weapons. So if you think, yeah, I found a submachine gun when I started the game, and I quite like the feel of those, you can have a look through these and you know see some of the ones that drop in the newer content. So Escape Velocity, 7th Serif, for example, the Archelos SMG is widely considered to be one of the best primaries in the game. Um, you know, You can sort of find the type of weapon that you like, and that's also true for your special, which, as you can see, these are some of the harder hitting stuff like shotguns and snipers. And, of course, your heavy, um, which is your, your big boy weapons, swords, rocket launchers, heavy grenade launchers. These are the ones that hit really hard. Your armor at the start of the game should be less complicated. But as you come more towards end game activity, you will want to consider um, applying mods to these. Now, because this is a basic beginner's guide, I'm not going to be going through mods today, as when you come into the game, you don't want to be wasting your time applying mods, as you'll be swapping your armor in and out very frequently to increase your power level, which we'll be coming to shortly. So for the most part, um, don't worry too much about mods just yet, but as you start coming into the 1200s, um, bearing in mind this, this season cap um, is 1260 on your gear so when you start getting your gear into the 1200s and you find some stuff that has some stat rolls that you really like you may want to consider modding it but I will be covering exactly that in probably the next guide in fact so within a few days or so so don't worry too much about that now um, just keep swapping out your armor with higher roll pieces that you get as you're playing through the campaign to ensure that your power level rises up you can have one exotic piece of armor equipped at any given time so it won't let you equip a second as you can see here and that is also true for your weaponry you cannot you can't equip a second one so um you know if you do have any exotics as a returning player or you just get any new ones as a brand new player just put them on see how they play it's very easy to go into these and see you know some details about what they do and so on um but for the most part your armor at the first part of the game you really don't need to worry about that much so that brings us on to the third part of this guide, which would be your power level. Now, your power level is essentially how the game um, decides whether you are able to do enough damage to the enemies that you are fighting. So just to read the description that it presents us with here, your power score is an aggregate of the power value across all of your currently equipped gear. A higher power score improves both your damage output and your defense. 
So quite simply, the bigger this number, the tankier you are and the more damage you do. Every single enemy in the game and all content always has its own power level tied to it. And what the game essentially does is look at your power level versus the power level of that enemy or content and that will then dictate how much damage that you do. To give an example, when you first start the game um, with this season, your base power level will be 1060, 1060. And this can go right up to 1260, which is the current gear cap of this season. Yes, that goes up over time and it is quite easy to see if your weapons are going to go past that point because by simply holding, in my case, um, the left trigger or L2 for PlayStation, you can easily see the seasonal power cap on the right hand side here is the blue number but the number above that is the power limit of this specific weapon. So I know that I can take this weapon to 1360 when the next season allows me to do so, but the highest it will allow, allow me to take this season is 1260. If I was to go and use an older weapon, for example, this duty bound just here, you can see that the seasonal power cap is 1260. It will always show that because that's just telling us the current seasonal cap. But above that, it only says 1060. This is an old weapon. You will not be able to push it past 1060 and therefore it's completely pointless um, to use uh, in most activities so just bear that in mind with your power level as well um, so yeah so what the game will essentially do is look at your current power level mine is 1265 at the moment um, and I'm getting a bonus on top of my gear score there which I'll explain in a second and then when you load into some content it will essentially calculate that for you so if you're just playing basic strikes, you can see at the bottom of my screen there it says recommended power 1050. That means even a brand new player that's just switched on the game could go into the strike and they will be at level as all of their gear will basically be 1050 to 1060. But as you progress through the game, you can start choosing higher difficulties. So you see the power level of this is 1220, 1250. Now it says recommended power level. You can achieve um, success by going into these lower than that power level but you'll be at a big disadvantage in terms of how much damage you are dealing and how much damage um, is being dealt to you so you know you'll get hurt quite a lot and you won't do as much damage and this is why it's important to keep your power level as high as possible because ultimately the more difficult content will actually reward you with well better rewards so Exotic gear is the rarest gear in the game, but it's actually common in this particular nightfall um, just because we've increased the power level. But if I try to go into this at a low level, I will get absolutely destroyed. So the whole point of this is to get your power level up so that you can start hitting the raid, um, which I believe is 1220. Yeah, 1220 recommended. And I think the final boss is up to 1250. So um, yeah, that, that is essentially the point of power level. So as it states here, what it does is it calculates an average of all of your gear. So you see these are all sort of 1250-ish. Um, same for the weapons, about 1250. But of course my power level should be 1250, or in this case it says 1251. I'm actually at 1265 because you can see that plus 14 bonus. By going through the base campaign, the Beyond Light campaign, within a few missions you will unlock what is called an artifact. Now what this does is it gives you a power bonus, as you can see that same plus 14 right there. And this is achieved by earning XP in game. We'll come to that in the final part of the video just in a moment as to how you do that. But essentially you don't need to have your gear all at 1260, the current cap. You could have it at 1250 like I have, and then just by earning XP you gain plus 1, plus 2, and I'm at plus 14 at the moment, which is why my score is actually 1265, even though my gear is all lower than that. So it's quite easy to do. It is literally a combination of your gear and your artifact, which means if you're struggling to find some gear that's high level, but you play the game a lot and you earn a lot of XP, you could actually still be at a very comparable level to somebody that has even higher gear than you, just because their artifact is lower. So you've sort of got two ways to increase your power level. Um, works in the same way as well you always want to be checking the current power limit of each gear so if you look at these boots just here on the left hand side you'll see the current power is 1252 but once again these have the power cap of 1260 so these will be perfect for the majority of this season seasons are usually three to four months long um, and then yeah, so you can see this will match up to the seasonal power cap exotics are exempt from this rule you'll notice there is no power limit quite simply they don't limit them at all exotics can just go up to whatever the current seasonal power cap so next season when it goes up to 1310 and then 1360 and 1410 um, you know these will just be able to go up to the highest and the way that you essentially improve the score of your weapons is to infuse them now when you're starting out you don't want to rely on infusion really at all for that matter because it is incredibly expensive and only really necessary for end game content as you're playing through the campaign, the game will recognise your overall power score from your gear, so in my case 1251, um, and up to about 1250 it will always drop even the 
the basic gear, the blue gear, such as these just here that aren't usually very good, either at your level or higher than your level. So bit by bit, if you're going through your mission, you get a drop on the floor, you can just swap it out with this new higher drop that will increase your level. And that's essentially what you want to keep doing. But when you're in a situation like I am, where you've got some you know, good armor pieces to have some of the stats that you want, and you've got some weapons and exotics that you're very happy with, you'll then want to look at the next part, which is infusion. I'll be covering this more in a bit of an advanced guide, but just to give you a quick overview, when you go into the weapon, you can essentially select this infuse option just here. And once again, it will tell you the power limit and the seasonal power cap. So this Archelos SMG will actually be viable up until 1360, <clears throat> but this season I can only get it to 1260. So if this was quite low, but I was very happy with this role, you know, I realized it was a good weapon and I did want to improve that and take it into the endgame content with me. What I would do is use a higher power level weapon that's in the same slot as the one I'm trying to, trying to infuse. And that would essentially allow me to bring the level up. I don't actually have any good examples here, unfortunately, but oh, hey, okay, here we go. So let's say I wanted to use this bad juju. We can see the power level is at 1244. But if I go to infuse, you'll notice that this one is highlighted for me because I, it's a higher power level. This one isn't because uh, it, I pulled this from the um, collections. That's a bit of a unique weapon there. But if I wanted to, I could just take this weapon and infuse it into this bad juju exotic. I would lose the weapon that I'm infusing and it would cost an upgrade module, which are quite expensive by the way. So do this sparingly, but it would then take this weapon to 1250, which if it's equipped means my overall power level would go up. So, you know, if you do find exotics and gear that you like and generally speaking you want to do this for your sort of purple legendary gear and don't worry about blues or anything um, then yes you can indeed infuse it so that covers the power level um, the section as I say all you need to do to increase this is just to, to play through the game there you know there will be videos out there for sort of the most efficient um, power grinds I'm not a fan of those I don't like um, to encourage particularly new players to the game to just do a boring activity for six hours just because it's a very fast and efficient way to right, raise your power level you can hit 1250 as I have um, quite comfortably just by doing everything in the game um, you know that you should be doing so basically the, the main campaign and then all of the powerful uh, gear options on the map as well all of these little gold tokens here just by doing those daily weekly you will very comfortably hit that power level in a very small period of time so don't worry too much about any specific efficient loot farms because they're really not necessary with the season so that brings us on to the final part of the guide which will be your quests and campaign now unfortunately i have completed the main quest on this character so i can't show you what it looks like but what will happen when you first load in as a returning or new player is on the left hand side you always have a sidebar just here which uh, typically is there whenever a brand new quest comes out that you've not yet picked up um, and what it will do is it will ask you to go to the moon to speak to Osiris so when you go on to the moon there will be a mission right here you essentially do that mission I'm not going to go through any spoilers or anything and from that point onwards it will put, put essentially the main campaign into your quest log now from your map, which is the screen we're on now, the destination screen, you can left bumper over twice or L1 over twice to come to your quest log. On the left hand side you will have all of your main story and side quest missions. and On the right hand side you will have all of your bounties. So when you have essentially done the very first part of the Beyond Light campaign, which is speak to Osiris on the moon and complete that mission, the, um, the Beyond Light, and it will literally be called Beyond Light, will appear as one of these just here. Now, as a returning player, you may have a lot of past quests. So you may have, um, you know, a load of stuff from the moon, from Forsaken. Um, ignore these is my best advice. They're all going to be capped at 1060 and they're not going to progress you through the new campaign. You can leave them in your log if you do want to complete them at a later date just to, you know, understand the story better or to obtain potentially the rewards that they give. But honestly, I wouldn't waste your time with anything from the past. What you want to be focusing on is Beyond Light, the second tab down and Seasonal. And to a lesser extent, your exotic, um, your exotic ones as well, because these ones will give you an exotic weapon once completed, and they always drop at a very good power level. But for the campaign, anything that is under Beyond Light, you want to highlight this tab first, and you want to be going through these, and then you want to start working your way into the seasonal stuff. Uh, again, I'm not going to give too much away as to what happens. Um, you know, there is quite an interesting story this season. They don't need to do them in any particular order. There's no time restrictions. The way that I generally do it is I'll just pick one quest. I'll highlight it, which if it has a destination, will actually show me where that is on the map. This particular one doesn't, but um, it will actually put the same tracker icon on whatever planet I need to go to. But if you highlight yourself over the um, your cursor over the quest, it gives you uh, 
you know, it tells you exactly what to do. So, for example, this Umbral, Umbral Flames quest here, it quite literally says complete the listed objectives in strikes. And then I've just got to follow those uh, instructions there. So very, very easy. I can track that. And then when I bring up my ghost, when I'm um, in a combat zone, it will even have that on my, my, head, my heads up display. So you can track your missions very comfortably and view the, um, the objectives without even going back into your menu. Once you've comp completed the Beyond Light campaign, you will then be moving into your seasonal stuff, which will be uh, Tangled Shore mostly. But um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail and any spoilers as to what that is. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of additional content that will start to unlock further additional content for you once you complete them. So initially you won't have access to um, the hunts. You won't have access to uh, these solo. Where are they? The Lost Sectors. You won't have access to this mission uh, you won't have access to the raid i don't believe you won't have access to the empire hunts which give you powerful gear so just bear that in mind um but once you start going through the basic campaign you will start to have these and time back into the previous part of the video these quests and missions that have a gold icon here which will all be unlocked you know once you start to go through the campaign do give you powerful and pinnacle gear what that essentially means, you'll see on the on the middle here, it says Powerful Gear Tier 1. This can go up to Tier 3, finishing on Pinnacle Gear, which is the highest form of gear that you can get. These will give you gear that's anywhere from plus 1 to plus 4 over your current average gear score. You may remember mine was 1251, so that Pinnacle drop could be 1253, 1254, which would be perfect because I could then slot that gear onto, if it was a chess piece here, which would then make this 1254, which would increase my power level, and therefore increase future drops as well, as it's always done from your total gear. You don't need to equip the items, you could just have them in your vault or on your person. The game will still calculate the highest that you can possibly be, whether you have that gear equipped or not, so just bear that in mind. But once you've started to hit the quest up, and if you want to change your pace or to continue levelling, you'll then want to go onto your destinations and start actually hitting all of these little gold icons here, these little gold token symbols. So for this one here, nice and simple, complete matches in any Crucible playlist, 0 of 3. That once again gives me pinnacle gear. So it's very straightforward to know what it is that you need to do. You'll have some for strikes, you'll have them for the nightfall strike. Some will be a little bit out of your reach at the moment. Um, for example, if you're a brand new player, the raid will give you some very powerful gear, but you, you might not be at the right place to do that just yet. So just have a look at the ones that you know have a recommended power level that is easily accessible. So for example, this one here, the recommended power is 1180. But if you have a look at the weekly, it says complete any Empire Hunt on Master difficulty. If I change this to Master, that's 1280. That's higher than even I am. Now, the game will allow me to do this, but I'm 15 levels below where I need to be. And it's going to have all of these very difficult modifiers on. Very difficult. And if you don't have the right builds for this, you, you, I mean, you won't make it through the first room, if I'm being totally honest. I will be covering builds for this content in, in the next set of videos, but just bear that in mind. You might not be able to complete all of the powerful gear icons you see on your map, but you want to do as many as possible, because not only will this help you to do your um, power level, but it's going to get you some more appropriate loot as well. So that is, that is really it. I know it can be quite daunting to come into the game, but you know once you sort of get the basics and you follow the quest through, just make sure that you go to Osiris on the Moon and then highlight your Beyond Light quest to start finishing that. And then once you get through that, you can start looking at other parts in this quest log. Of course, this entire time, you'll be getting more and more powerful gear. Uh, the gear to start with will show as blue for the most part. So that's like the kind of the basic gear and eventually end up on legendary gear like this. So yes, you might find that your build you know, is all over the place. It's got blues and purples and everything to start with, but don't worry about it. You know, Ultimately, that's just there to increase your power level so you have an easier time in the future missions. Um, and yeah, it, as I say, it'll increase that power level and you might start to find weapons that you like. Just try and follow that rule of one primary, one special, one heavy, and you really can't go too far wrong as well. So that is pretty much everything. Um, if you do have any questions or any sort of requests for future guides, please do let me know in the comments. As I said before, if you do like the content of the channel, please do like and subscribe. Um, I do aim to answer all co uh, comments as well. So any questions that you have or anything that you feel I've missed off, please do let me know and I'll come back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for watching through to the end and I will see you all in the next video.